Key point one. Perfectionism limits our lives. Doing your best and perfectionism are two distinct things. If the first is necessary for personality development, then the second signals a distorted perception of reality. Examples of a perfectionist perception of reality include unrealistic expectations, endless doubts about starting any activity, the need for constant approval from others. Society nurtures perfectionists. Parents and teachers require excellent grades, successful graduation, and exceptional career achievements. Even scrolling through our news feeds, we constantly see advertising messages about how to learn effectively, exercise better, and dress more stylishly. We're encouraged to be wiser, faster, and happier. It's exhausting and fake. Because of the pursuit of the ideal, we consider life's natural difficulties insurmountable obstacles. Moreover, perfectionism is often the cause of psychological disorders, such as depression, or leads to addictions, such as smoking and overeating. However, perfectionism is not an immutable characteristic. We can get rid of it thanks to the right approach. Imperfections can free us from excessive demands and expectations. By realizing that perfectionism is not the norm, and that we can't always achieve success on the first try. We can create, make mistakes, and start over. Perfectionism is not a guarantee of success. So how can we eradicate the perfectionistic ambitions that are upsetting and harmful to our mental well-being? How to be an imperfectionist comprehensively answers this question. Stephen Guys explains the nature of perfectionism and gives practical advice on how to get rid of it. You will learn the following. How small steps lead to significant results. Why mistakes are a natural part of our development. All about binary thinking. Why the process is more important than the result. The techniques and tips you'll find here will help you relax and be yourself. Key point two. We secretly pride ourselves on striving for perfection. Society often understands perfectionism as ambitiousness and purposefulness. Therefore, when we admit our perfectionism, we don't say it with sadness or shame, but rather with pride. At first glance, there is nothing wrong with striving for perfection. On the contrary, it stimulates us to work more actively and diligently. However, if we delve deeper into this concept, we will see its toxicity and danger. Perfectionism is destructive to our mental health. Due to the desire for perfection, it is challenging to make quick decisions and take the first steps. It leads to procrastination and a loss of energy. Do you have situations where you put off something for days, weeks, and months? For example, you don't send a resume to get a job you wanted for a long time. Or when a passerby asks you for directions to the store, you get confused and answer with something incomprehensible. And later, this situation haunts you as something awkward. It's all about perfectionism. Thinking that now is the wrong time or mood to act is also a sign of the same troubling issue. Perfectionism is often the cause of frustration, depression, and various kinds of addictions. But until we abandon the notion that excellence is necessary for success, we will frequently experience the adverse effects of perfectionism without realizing it. Therefore, the first step to getting rid of perfectionism is to realize its harmfulness. Is it reasonable to seek flaws since the drive for excellence has a damaging influence on our lives? To some extent, yes. The second step is recognizing imperfections normality. The truth is that none of us are perfect. Having realized this, we will stop demanding the impossible from ourselves and others. We often try to hide imperfections under a flawless appearance, filters on social networks, expensive things, and notable career achievements. We spend a lot of effort trying to hide the truth, but imagine the freedom we can experience if we allow ourselves not to be impeccable. We could do things that perfect people wouldn't even think of. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Let's try to be imperfect. Never use guilt as motivation. Stephen Guise. Key point three. Perfectionism is about more than you might think. Perfectionism hides behind many things. It is about more than high standards and increased achievement requirements. The primary forms of perfectionism are idealistic expectations, rumination, need for acceptance, fixation on mistakes, lack of desire to move forward. All of them hinder our development and growth. We immerse ourselves in doubts, focus on mistakes, and paint ideal or terrible scenarios so diligently that real life is unattainable. 
Because of perfectionism, we don't accept good results, only the best. The pursuit of ideality makes us delay the first step and procrastinate. To start acting, we need three conditions. Ideal circumstances, which include time, place, and tools. Perfect quality. Perfect quantity. Imagine you want to become a singer. Naturally, you have some fears and doubts. But instead of starting to take small steps toward your goal, you succumb to perfectionism. Although you plan to go to the first lesson the following day, when you wake up, you see the rain outside the window and change your mind. It's about the lack of ideal circumstances. Suppose you decide to listen to your voice first and refuse to go to class after hearing it on the recording because of its imperfection. In that case, this is an example of poor quality. If you still go to the course but don't achieve perfect results in five classes as planned, this is an example of an insufficient quantity because you didn't get the desired result at the scheduled time. Why do we strive for perfection and what is hiding behind it? One of the reasons for perfectionism is self-doubt. Focusing on our strengths or weaknesses is a choice that everyone makes. If we strive for perfection, we choose flaws. It explains our disbelief in ourselves. Another possible reason for perfectionism is an inferiority complex, an inadequate perception of ourselves compared to others. This complex causes either a desire to actively and aggressively prove one's superiority or forces a person to hide and dissolve in the crowd. It may be sad to admit, but our parents and school upbringing often cause our perfectionism. Suppose parents constantly repeat that an A grade shows outstanding mental ability and a B indicates insufficient effort. In that case, children will believe that only the best result will save them from disappointment. It's either A or do nothing at all. All or nothing is a motto for perfectionists. Key point four. What distinguishes an imperfect person from a perfectionist? We need to look toward freedom and lack of restrictions. Accepting our flaws, we decide to live beyond the rules, requirements, and approval of our actions. We choose to do what we want, and it's not about immorality or breaking the law. Imperfection means to live as we like without violating the boundaries of others. We know we have flaws and can't earn everyone's acceptance. If perfectionists run away and hide from everything that may reveal their weaknesses, then imperfect ones have long since accepted that they are not impeccable. Perfectionism makes us believe we should achieve significant results on the first try. If it doesn't happen, we stop trying. Imperfection, in turn, helps us move from a different starting point. We do what interests us and consider it a success. We can avoid worrying about mistakes thanks to our awareness of our imperfections. The truth is that being imperfect is normal. None of us are flawless and never will be and it gives us unlimited power and desirable relaxation. We consciously give up the stress and tension required by perfection. We no longer need to be afraid of mistakes. We can do as we want. The paradox is that giving up striving for ideal results is more likely to lead us to them than trying to be perfect. It is enough to move forward at your own pace to achieve success. The problem with perfectionism is its limitlessness. What do idealists define as genuinely impeccable? What is the limit of flawlessness? It does not exist. The pursuit of excellence has no endpoint and is never satisfying. Defining the boundaries of the ideal will bring us closer to imperfections and freedom. Although perfectionism makes us pursue flawlessness to be loved by everyone, its demanding nature repels and scares others. It is because each of us knows about our imperfections. Therefore, Seeing how someone does not hide their flaws but admits them makes us want to join in and not be afraid of our flaws. It's not so scary to be imperfect together. Key point five. Take small steps to achieve significant results. We are used to thinking that we need the right mood and motivation to start doing anything. And it is true. A positive emotional state is essential for activity. When you feel down, completing daily tasks becomes difficult. However, it is also true that action can change the mindset. In other words, to feel motivated, you need to start acting. Your energy level will increase, and the strength and desire to continue will appear. You have probably noticed that there are moments when you wake up without the desire to go to work, study, or even get out of a warm bed. But the fog gradually dissipates when you finally get up and start doing little things one by one. Washing, making coffee, and cooking breakfast. Now you have the power to move on. 
It is how actions affect how we feel. We try to find motivation by thinking, while it requires action. When we try to motivate ourselves by changing the way we think, we can fall into the trap of unrealistic ideas. It is a type of perfectionism that involves fantasizing about unfolding certain events. For example, you plan to go to the gym after work. However, by this time, you are tired and unmotivated. You envision how long it will take you to get to the gym and then back home. You also think about how sore your body will be the next day. All these thoughts reduce motivation. You can avoid reluctance to act if you interrupt this thought process and divide your task into small goals. Set a time frame for you to put on a sports uniform, then go outside and enter the gym. The paradox is that your ideas about the process differ from reality. Thanks to your activity, you will feel a rush of strength and energy after exercising. Waiting for motivation to appear is a waste of time. Although this strategy is justified in certain situations, the action-first method works more often. It does not mean that you should do something huge. Small steps are more than enough. Key point six, the process or the result, what is more important? Because of perfectionism, we especially worry about the outcome. We don't see the process as a point of growth, but believe we must achieve remarkable results no matter what. We are motivated by fantasies. Our disappointment leads to despair and apathy when it doesn't happen due to unrealistic perceptions. But what happens if we change the focus from the result to the process and enjoy the latter? The result includes many factors, many beyond our control. For example, suppose the internet disappears during an online exam and we can't send our answers on time. In that case, this is an external factor beyond our control. However, the process is something we can control. It is in our power to continue to act regardless of the circumstances. For example, find a way to contact the teacher, explain your situation, and ask for another chance to take the exam. Sometimes taking a break and going for a walk is enough. Doing what you can is the secret to success. Small steps help you to focus on the process. If you want to learn to dance, buying dancing shoes or a uniform is already a success. Imagine yourself on stage in front of the judges who applaud your performance. Yet sitting on the sofa at home is unlikely to produce the desired results. But if you do the things that are available to you now, like find a teacher, sign up for the first class, etc., and at the same time enjoy your activity. These are steps that can lead you to the stage one day. You are a winner because you took the first step, and you deserve praise from yourself. The joy of each previous step inspires us to take the next one, and so on. You are already moving toward the goal. Be happy and proud of yourself. It is the power of the process. Did you know? The effect of inattentional blindness means we are often blind to what is happening right under our noses if we focus on another task. Key point seven, why it's good to be wrong sometimes. Mistakes are part of our development and growth. In childhood, when we learn to take our first steps or speak, we never get it right the first time. We have yet to suffer from perfectionistic tendencies and move at our own pace to grow and develop. But falling into the trap of idealism, we forget about the naturalness of mistakes. We associate them with failure and lack of ability or talent. Ultimately, this leads to frustration, depression, and a reluctance to try further. We need to make mistakes more than once to achieve success. Let's take Steven Spielberg as an example. He was rejected from studying at the School of Cinematic Arts three times. However, he did not give up and enrolled in a technical college. In his spare time, he created a short film that Universal Pictures liked. We can move forward and be happy by seeing mistakes as friends, not enemies. How do errors signal development? The fact is that the only way to avoid being wrong is to stand in one place. Therefore, if you fail, you are moving toward success. Such an attitude to mistakes reduces the fear and anxiety of taking steps toward your goal. If we know that errors do not signal our inability to achieve what we want, then there is no point in stopping. Understanding that mistakes are natural makes it easier to accept that achieving goals often takes a long time. We can't learn a language in a day, but we can learn five words in a day, and that's a victory. It is also important to remember that we perceive mistakes in different ways. We are not disappointed in ourselves when we forget to buy milk, but we are afraid of errors that can expose our imperfections. For example, 
What will others think of us if we fail the university exam? We fear that people will think we need to be more intelligent and diligent. The truth is that others are far more interested in their personal lives than ours. Changing how we look at our mistakes frees us from worrying about other people's opinions. The key to building powerful confidence is to decide specifically what you can be confident about right now and build from there. Stephen Guise Key Point 8 Binary thinking is a path to liberation. Perfectionism is challenging to overcome, but some methods teach us to appreciate even small achievements. It is common for perfectionists to obsess over the quality of their work. Let's imagine that you are a person who strives for perfect outcomes and you need to get a job. Undoubtedly, you will be satisfied with a positive interview result. You will consider it a colossal failure if you don't get a place. A binary way of perceiving reality will allow you to consider yourself a winner because it involves focusing on the fact that you came to the interview. You took action. It doesn't matter if you get the job. What matters is that you passed the interview and gained experience. Don't demand the impossible from yourself. Set realistic goals. Focusing on more manageable tasks doesn't mean giving up on success or more ambitious pursuits. However, this means transforming ideal goals into something more realistic. For example, you dream of cleaning your house perfectly in one hour. The truth is that this is difficult to achieve. And even thoughts about perfect results are exhausting and cause internal resistance. However, you can clean several shelves and wash the dishes during this time. It is a real task, and completing it will give you the energy to move on. With binary thinking, it is not about how well we completed the task, but the fact that we did it. Moreover, binary thinking reduces the fear of failure. Remember that you are good because you do something, and not because of how well you do. There is no point in worrying about the result. The outcome is a pleasant bonus. When we are focused on the quality of our actions or achievements, we constantly fantasize about what could go wrong. It is how our fear of failure works. Maybe I won't know the answer to the interview question, or my experience will be considered irrelevant. The power of binary thinking is that showing up for an interview is enough. There is no point in worrying about how it will go. By choosing a binary approach to reality, you will eventually gain so much experience and practice that success will be the logical outcome. Another reason to think binary is that we don't like to overextend ourselves. If we can obtain something effortlessly, why not do it? A binary way of thinking allows you to break big tasks into small ones and be a winner at each stage. Conclusion You are intelligent, attractive, and good enough. It may be hard to believe, but you don't have to be perfect. Why? Because impeccability does not exist. We all have flaws that will always be with us, no matter how hard we hide them and compensate for them with other achievements. This thought can be frustrating, but it's helpful. By letting go of unrealistic aspirations and desires, we obtain something valuable, freedom. You can start by not using social media filters. It's scary at first, but eventually, it's a relief. No need to hide anymore and wonder if you're good enough. You can be as you are. If there are no restrictions, no norms to which you must conform, you can be yourself. Somewhat paradoxically, although society establishes norms of conformity, it accepts and appreciates imperfect individuals. Others are comfortable with those who show their flaws because they can be themselves next to them. Imperfection leads to a happy life full of mistakes, victories, and freedom. Try this. 1. Break the big goal down into several easy-to-do steps. For example, if you dream of singing, start by choosing a teacher and sign up for a trial lesson. Praise yourself for every step. 2. The next time something happens beyond your control, give yourself time to get used to the fact that you can't change the situation. This recognition will help you to move on. 3. This idea takes courage, but try talking to a stranger on the street. For example, wish someone a good day at a bus stop. You will feel joy and fulfillment. 